going to talk about uh, going prone in fence for something if you had to evacuate a large cerebellar hematoma, or even if you were doing a posterior cervical uh, surgery and wanted Mayfield pens for manipulation of the neck. We're going prone, so you'll use some type of chest padding, often a large chest roll. This can either be positioned like this, or often you can have two of them positioned parallel, and that gives the patient's chin a little bit more room to rest. Another thing to pay attention to before the patient gets in the room frequently, you want a large sheet with plenty of slack on either end, and that'll be useful for you know, cradling the arms as they're hanging below the patient, okay? So for this, you'll frequently uh, pin before you go prone for either position, so we're going to assume our patient's already innovated. We're going to get our Mayfield pins, and when doing this, it's really just preference on which side the two and one go on. So you're going to want to make sure the patient uh, is looking straight up and down. And here, pin positioning is very important because it's easy to get in very thin temporal bone if you're not paying attention and cause a skull fracture or an epidural hematoma. So you want to make sure that your pins are low enough to be along the meridian or where you would normally use a sweatband around the head, but also you want them high enough to where they're not along the thinnest part of the temporal bone. A good rule of thumb is on your two side, getting one a little bit farther back towards in solid temporal bone or occipital bone, and then one up a little bit higher. And then on your single side, if you can look where I'm looking now, keep it directly above the pinna, and that keeps you from getting in the thinnest part of that temporal bone. So we're going to go in like that, tighten down to 60 pounds of pressure, and then we'll get the patient moved over and lined up at the bed. Now when you're lining up the patient, the most important thing to note is where they are in the room and making sure their shoulders often line up with the top of the Mayfield, because that's going to be your main limiting uh, step. Now this may feel actually too far out. Normally the shoulders will be lined up about here or here. We're going to have to come up a little bit with them. Okay. It's also helpful if you pump the bed up so that when you're rolling the patient, you're not rolling uphill. Mm -hmm. So the way that you do that, at least on these stretchers, um, you can see at the bottom there's little label diagrams. You want the one with the air going up. So it's that one. So you can use that up a little bit. Okay, so now you're going to need more help than normal to roll the patient because someone's going to have to be on airway, someone's going to have to be watching the pens, and then several people, depending on how big the patient is, to help with the body. So if you're on the catching side of the patient when you're rolling, you want to push this arm in so it doesn't get trapped um, and it's been moving around when you're um, rolling. If you're on that side of the patient, you're basically just going to be pushing. Okay, so with this patient, let's move, let's grab the sheet and move to the edge of the bed. Get them all over a little bit. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Good. Okay, perfect. All right. Everybody ready? So I'm going to push this arm in, but not get my arm trapped underneath the patient either. All right. And on the pushing side, shoulder and hip. Yep. All right, everybody ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. So you want to move slowly and in line with the body if you're on head. Good. Now this is where it's helpful to make sure somebody has the, both arms, and then that somebody has like to get the stretcher out of the way. Sure. So okay. while we're supporting the arms, we move the stretcher away, and then someone will, and then we'll often pad the arms with several pieces of foam. We all go ahead and bring up the sheet, support the arms. While they're doing the arm, we're securing the Mayfield. So you want the tape to be very secure to the bed. Um, sometimes it's hard to find the right spot. So you really want to get it on the rail here, or you want to do it on the bottom part of the bed. Okay? And then you want to bring it across like that. And some things, you know, some things want to wrap all the way around, others just want it to the bed. But either way, but you don't want to secure it to the sheet or the patient or something like that. So a couple more points about the prone position. Uh, when you're like this, you want to make sure that the leg of the bed is up so the patient's knees are flex and he is well supported here. Has to either foam or pillow underneath the calves and the toes aren't resting directly on the bed. The other thing, in order to secure the patient at kind of their center of mass, you can use the bed strap or more tape and create this strap, avoiding the hand, and keep, go, let it go under and support the upper thigh and buttock of the patient. And then go keep going around the bed. And this is just a really good secure spot at their center of mass where you're going to be able to secure them. You know, there's a point in time when everybody's unscrubbed. And the, the last thing that anybody wants to see is, you know, we're getting ready to flip the patient. And you just don't want to be caught over on the side of the operating room not helping. The bed needs to be brought in. 
um, we're getting ready to flip the patient back over. So that's a really helpful thing that the medical students can do um, is, is run out and, and grab the bed and bring it in. So you, you grab the bed, the bed's here. Um, and at this point, you would, you would release the sheets and tape um, and you would, somebody would be over here holding this arm and then somebody else mm -hmm. has to catch as you, as you flip. Okay. So now we're adjacent here. So we got the bed as close as we can. You also want to make sure the head is lined up with the head of the bed and you always tend to lose altitude. So if the head's a little bit above, that's good. Yeah, and then you just make sure that the bed is low enough so that you let gravity work for you. So mm -hmm. you can let this arm down, I'll hold this. Good. And you can lower the bed a little. Good. good. So next okay. we're gonna disconnect the Mayfield from the adapter. Again, three, two, one, always maintaining our good order. And he's gonna hold the head and he'll be controlling the pins. Anesthesia will be there to monitor the airway. And then you'll be, your main role, if you're on that side, is just to catch the patient and control the arms. You wanna make sure, as we discussed military position, you wanna make sure that they don't get twisted or anything like that. You can dislocate um, somebody's arm or, or shoulder. All and right. then if you're on this side, you're gonna push on their cuff. Everybody ready? Fully clear? <laughs> One, two, three. Good. All right, so you always loosen this up and that makes this grenade pin easier to pull out. You pull that out and you can often get somebody to assist in removing that. Once it's loose enough, you pull it away from the head. And you can now, pop, I like to pop it all the way out and that way you can just lift mm -hmm. it either way and you don't worry, because if you leave these too close and you try to pull it away, it can mm -hmm. lacerate the scalp. It's also not uncommon for a pin to stay within the skull. That's okay, you just pull it out. And then afterwards, you always inspect your pen sites, make sure there's no persistent bleeding. If there is, 90% of the time, it'll go away with gentle pressure. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.